Today's adventure brings us to this parking lot just outside the Hollywood Bowl in Southern California. And this barn, established in 1913, holds a heck of a lot of history because this is the site of the very first Cecil B. DeMille movie. And some say the location of the first movie ever shot in Hollywood, full length shot in Hollywood. Dun, 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 dun. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Before I wander across the pavement and inside those walls, I want to take you around town and show you a little backstory, a little history on some of the other spots where this barn once sat and leading up to where it currently resides. And then after that, we'll step inside. Join me, shall you? About a mile and a half where it currently resides, heading over to its original location. On the corner of Selma Avenue and Vine Street, way before that Trader Joe's came to town, on this very corner at the Equinox Complex, the Camden Apartments, is where it sat in that precise spot. If you were standing where I am, looking in the same direction back in the day, you would have seen some classic cars also on that corner. And not only did the structure end up being removed, but those trees also have been replaced over the years. Looks as if they're shooting something over there as we speak. I guess some things never change. Tucked away in the courtyard area, this angle from the back side of the barn, take a look closely at this structure here with its fire escapes and the architecture at the tippy top of the building. That is still there. Fire escapes and that unique roof line. Standing a few feet from the pinpointed exact spot, however, because this building would block our view. It's pretty cool to match all that up and to think that it originally was sitting right there. The group of people from the production moved, so I was able to cross the road and stand here. I cannot move any further to the right however, but you can match up this and you can see some faint buildings on the far left corner and those also are still here today. But this is it, I'm standing, I'm standing right where it was. As time went on and the production facilities grew and Lasky Studios stretched all the way down the block to Vine Street, there's now a bank here, but also in front of this fountain is this plaque on the ground and time capsule designating the history. It looks as if they're gonna crack the ground open in 2037 and we'll finally be able to see what's been buried here. Makes you wonder. General layout of the land before it was bulldozed. Bottom corner, Selma and Vine. Right there, the only structures that were moved before its demolition is the barn and that time capsule right on the corner of Sunset and Vine at that fountain and bank. That's what you're looking at there. Artistic rendering when it was on the corner of Selma and Vine. Funny to think if it was still there current day, they could just walk right out the front door and go to Trader Joe's, but it was moved. All these extras waiting on the street corner, trying to get a roll. Look at the way the cross streets were designated. Those little wooden signs. No traffic lights back then. Just a ways away is Paramount Studios, where it sat for many, many years. Right here, just to our left. If I was to walk up any closer, you would not see that iconic Hollywood sign directly through the archway. Not too bad with the palm trees there in frame and the water tower as well. And speaking of that water tower that you can see just above that hedge line, there it is. You can see the base of what held it up in the air 
And there's the barn. Right below that was its new home, for a time being. Documented amongst the old western sets. In fact, you could see it in a couple TV episodes from Bonanza. And that's it, right there. Sitting kind of catty corner to the building to its right. And as best I can tell, they shifted it on one occasion. It used to run perpendicular to this long building I'm closing in on. And for one reason or another, they turned it to that angle. I wonder why. See here it is running along the length of that wall on the building beside it. Completely different than what I just showed you from the Bonanza era. While on this side it was used for storage and as a gymnasium. And there's Mr. DeMille standing in front of the door. But alas, things change and progress always wins in the end. So now we're heading two miles to the next spot. It sat in this parking lot next to the Capitol Records building with a fence around it. No one could visit it, just falling into disrepair and decay. You have to wonder if the employees up on the top floor were curious about what sat at the base of their building. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's about it. Nailed it. Thankfully, since then, it has been preserved and placed on display for all to see. Which takes me to the very last spot, the most in-depth location, which is where I started this video from. So we're basically going to be going full circle. I'll see you there. Under the cooling, beautiful shade of these trees, amongst the picnic tables, there it is. The Lasky DeMille Barn. Hollywood Heritage Museum. And there is plenty of information outdoors. Built in 1901 for agricultural use. In 1912, it was adapted for the motion picture production here in town. This side could be seen in a movie by the name of The Rainmaker, reconstructed in the 50s after it became a California State Historic Landmark circa 1927. That's what it looked like. And pretty much the same, except the front porch has been added on. This placard was placed on the wall, dedicated in 56. And these three gentlemen, from left to right, Cecil B. DeMille, Jesse L. Lasky, and Samuel Goldwyn. That's some big names, for sure. Still mounted right here on site. And I found another, another picture of the guys around it. Pretty cool, right? Adolf Zucker, who was one of the business partners, was also here for the dedication. And he was photographed walking alongside of the structure just about in here. I'm standing basically where the photographer would have taken the picture. This one blows my mind. Here's DeMille directing the water scene from Ten Commandments on the Paramount lot. And look at the roof line behind him. The freaking Ten Commandments. Pretty, pretty freaking cool. By climbing this concrete staircase, get a pretty good view of the backside. Now when it was on Selma Avenue, its original spot, there's some good photos of the cast and crew from the Squaw Man around the backside from this angle. It's time. I've never been in here before. I'm ready. Let's do this. 1928 before being turned into a gym. I can't go in that way. I gotta go through the front. February 15th, 1983. You can see it being moved along the surface streets of LA. Check this out. Inside is the office of Director DeMille. There's his megaphone. Picture of his wife up there. Some old checks. Wow. And his shoes down here. The Selma address is still inscribed on the top of the door. This would have been the entryway to his office. And this was the original sign out front before it was designated 
a historical landmark. This model designates the the courtyard there, going along Selma and onto Vine Street. Things have changed. Props from King of Kings and the Crusades. And over here, part of the lion's head and wardrobe from the actors from Ten Commandments on loan from an organization that did a dig out in the desert and found relics from the movie. Wow, this chest is visible in one of the scenes as well. There's an arrow designating the spot right there. That's some serious movie history. A bust of Jesse L. Lasky, pioneer producer. And it's not just relating to the same theme of items that are in here. There are a lot of other artifacts. This chair from 1915's The Cheat, and once again, there's an arrow designating where you can see it. Usually these two are quite a bit more lively. Must be tired today, must be, must be tuckered out. Loading that camera onto the high boom to get the aerial shots. And Gone with the Wind, the burning of Atlanta scenes were shot on this very camera. Painting down there of what I'm currently wandering and standing inside of and that's Buster Keaton. And this camera was used and belonged to him. Quite a few exhibits from the silent film era because the Squaw Man was in fact a silent movie. But I love the ceiling and roof line that is still visible. Kind of gives you that old school back in the day feel. When the director calls for action, you best get moving because if not, he might yell a little louder and blow out an eardrum behind this case, Douglas Fairbanks Sr.'s outfit and the Iron Mask. I was having a hard time deciphering what this model represented as far as which one of the studios this was, so I had to ask, and they said this is basically just a generic interpretation, a mishmash, if you will, of all the different ones, but basically how the old studios around here used to look. For example, you'd have a Old West set just out of eye shot of the production buildings and the art department and a plank among desert rocks could be on the opposite side of a parking lot movie magic rome like ruins next to the snow of winter and even some sailboats all on the same property and just like in a real production set they only paint and display what the camera needs to see, so the back end is left untouched. One thing you don't think about are the lights that will be shining on you when you're an actor. Imagine trying to, to deliver your lines with this thing beaming in your eyes. It is pretty neat to be indoors and see things from the opposite angle, these doors from so many historical photos of this place, or the windows up top. It's pretty neat to be in here. I'm glad they restored it and it's open to the general public. That's gonna do it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It lets me know you care. If you're new here, please subscribe by doing so. Helps keep you in the loop and up to date on future endeavors, adventures I will be going on, as well as uploads on this channel. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.